Folks, there was an announcement today for the Thrones of Decay DLC for Total War Warhammer 3. Let's watch the trailer here, and then we'll jump in and discuss in more detail. So that's it folks, Thrones of Decay is here. So let's jump in and let's discuss what is in this DLC. Now we've already had an announcement from CA that talked about how they are going to be selling things and pricing things a little different. And hopefully we're gonna see lessons learned from Shadows of Change carry over to here. And let's just jump in and talk about the characters. So the first person that we get announced and we see here in the dragon is Elspeth Von Draken. Or Von Draken, I guess. I don't know exactly how to do it, but um, writing Magisterix, which is going to be a dragon. So it's pretty cool. Now, she is the Dark Lady of Nuln, and I am excited because Nuln, of course, is very gun focused, and we will be seeing some new gunpowder units added to the Empire and some campaign mechanics focused around it. Now, she is an Amethyst Wizard, which means Lore of Death, um, and the dragon, of course, is going to make her an interesting and powerful character. Um, but I, it sounds like from the way they describe her battle play style, which I will re, uh, read here now, and it says, Riding her powerful Carmine Dragon, Elspeth is deadly in every sense of the word. She manipulates the battlefield from range, and that's the key there, I think, with her innate magical abilities from the lore of death before charging into enemy ranks with her dragon and two-handed pale scythe. So that should be interesting. It sounds like maybe a bit of a hybrid character, um, but interesting potential benefits from range, which I think would be really fun. And then speaking of other new units, or sorry, let's go through the campaign features. Uh, they mentioned that there's going to be an Imperial Gunnery School, um, and basically it's going to offer special unit upgrades and powerful abilities in return for schematics. So schematics are going to be feasibly their faction currency, um, and you trade those in for powerful benefits. And then there's the Gardens of Moor. Um, it says a vigilant protector of the Empire, Elspeth establishes these sacred sites in a limited number across uh, visible, friendly, or neutral Empire settlements to provide instant travel to those locations um, at a cost and with a cooldown. So sounds interesting in the sense that she might be able to travel around and help the other Empire factions, which I think would create for a fun play style. Um, and as far as playstyle, we read through what it expected her playstyle to be like, and then it mentions new units. So the Empire ranks are going to have new units. You're going to have the Marienburg land ship, which we see in the footage, and it looks quite fun, I might add. A little bit different than the other ship we've seen on land, which was the Necrofex Colossus. Um, we're going to get a steam tank with a volley gun, um, the uh, Nuln Ironsides, Hawkland Long Rifles, Knights of the Black Rose, and a Master Engineer Lord, an engineer hero, and the indomitable Theodore Bruckner, which is a legendary hero. Now, I have to admit, I am extremely excited for these units, and I also have to admit, I am extremely sad that the dwarves don't get an engineer hero of some sort, but we are getting cool stuff for the dwarves, so we will get to that. But anyway, that is Elspeth von Draken von Draken. I'm going to say Draken until someone corrects me, but it probably is Draken just because I chose to say Draken. Um, but uh, coming in for Nurgle, uh, and by the way, I'm just going to be looping the trailer in the background by the um, so that we have something to play and it's not just 
blank screen or, or words, but we have uh, Temurkan the Maggot Lord. And again, if I say these wrong, I apologize. All right, so the Maggot Lord is going to be obviously a Nurgle faction, and I don't know whether to be excited here or to just not be excited now. This has nothing to do with CA. I just personally am not all that interested in Nurgle factions because they're gross and repulsive and disgusting, which, to be fair, is probably the aim that we had going for Nurgle. I think that's supposed to be the way it is, and obviously some people find a lot of fun in that aesthetic and what you get to do with it, but to me it's just gross and repulsive and disgusting. <laughs> now that said, Nurgle was no fun for me to play, and I I don't even know if I've ever played a Nurgle campaign. I just like don't ever do it now. I'm obviously going to try it because we're going to try out the new lords. And as far as play style, um, he uh, he's a sentient maggot, apparently, which again, sounds very Nurgly. Um, and it's within the rot bloated corpse of a powerful ogre tyrant. So he's going to be rather large. Um, and we can assume that it's going to come with good melee stats. Um, so basically his aim is just to spread death and disease like you would expect from Nurgle. Um, and his campaign features are going to include Tamarkan's chieftains, which basically he has to amass this giant war host. Um, and so he's going to be looking to dominate powerful lore, warlords from Chaos and Norska. So assuming you're going to go out and try and dominate them and add them to your faction, probably to create this powerful host. Um, as far as play style goes, um, he's on a he's on a giant toad dragon, and he's going to have a, a giant two headed axe. So I think we can assume this means he's going to be a very tanky melee character. And then you know, like Nurgle is, he's going to be uh, dealing life sapping damage upon the enemy to keep him in the thick of battle. So he's going to be difficult to kill. So no big surprise there. That sounds exactly like what we'd expect from Nurgle. Now there are new units coming to Nurgle's army, which I think are important too. And this is part of the reason why Nurgle was so boring is quite frankly their units were extremely boring. Uh, we're going to see um, uh, units added, which is Kazk, Kazk, the Befouled, which is a legendary lord, sorry, Kazk, I think, um, the uh, Chaos Lord of Nurgle, um, and then we're, which is a generic lord. We're going to have the Chaos Sorcerer of Nurgle. Um, this is going to be a, a hero, obviously, um, and then we're going to have Plague Ogres, Rot Knights, Toad Dragons, Pestigors, not to be confused with Pestigors, but they are pretty much the same, and then Bile Trolls. So... Nice smattering of new units headed to Nurgle's roster here that could potentially add um, a little bit of needed speed. Like when I look at Rot Knights and Bile Trolls, Pestigors even, probably faster than standard Nurgle infantry. So one of the things that killed me playing as um, Nurgle was just, just the horrible slowness and just boringness on the battlefield. Like just sitting there and waiting for the other army to like slowly get worn out and die of boredom killing you. <laughs> so I don't know, hopefully we'll see something different, but maybe not. That may just be the way Nurgle works. And then finally, they introduce us to Malachi Mackaison, uh, the Slayer Engineer. And this is going to be interesting. So I did want kind of like an engineer type hero from the dwarves. We got a Slayer Engineer instead. And you know what? I guess I'll take it. And I'm excited because we're going to see some cool new units from the dwarves. And Malachi, I think, is going to make things quite fun. It says he was once a member of the Legendary Engineers Guild before a disaster saw him ejected. He was shamed. He took up the Slayer's Oath and now he's seeking redemption. So this ought to be interesting. Now, uh, in the campaign, he's got the spirit of Grungni, so his army is marched beneath the airborne machine known as the spirit of Grungni, um, and basically that legendary airship acts as a mobile base for him. Um, it, it says, uh, I'll read it here, it says, a legendary airship the Slayer Engineer can upgrade on the move to increase his battle prowess and even call upon in battle. So obviously there's probably gonna be some bound abilities associated with it which should be quite fun. And then you have the other campaign feature, which is Malachi's Adventures. So as he seeks glorious doom that all Slayers desire, um, he's going to use his deadly exploits to test and improve his latest engineering innovations and the most perilous battles he can instigate. So obviously there's going to be these quests probably that it sends you on, and it sounds like there's going to be certain rewards for them, and that sounds pretty fun to me. Um, and as far as play style, um, again, I'll just read this here so we get it right. Um, says he serves the dwarves as a ranged support lord, tossing explosives towards the enemy with cinder blast cluster bomb. I do like the idea of a cluster bomb being in a total war game. It says blasting them to bits with his shotgun. Again, I'm a big personal fan of shotguns, and so I like this, especially with the chaos dwarves having brought in the blunderbusses. And it says if anybody gets too close for comfort, smacking them in the face with a massive spanner. That works too. So basically everything about Malachi sounds fantastic to me already. Um, engineering excellence, which again, 
I like this. I went to school to be an engineer, so we're going down the right road here. Um, meets Bearded Bravery. Uh, the Dwarf Franks are going to pick up Garagrim. I think, yeah, Garagrim Iron Fist, who's a legendary hero. We're going to have a Demon Slayer Lord become available, a Dragon Slayer Hero, Doom Seekers, Goblin Hewer, the Thunder Barge, which we saw in the footage there, the Grudge Raker Thunders, and Slayer Pirates. There's also going to be Patch 5.0 that comes out alongside of all this. And there's going to be free LC content that comes, or free content. Um, so that's going to be exciting too, which sounds like um, uh, there's going to be some really neat stuff coming uh, with the update. I'm personally excited about it. There are different ways for you to participate in the DLC. You can buy each Lord's faction alone if you don't want to spend as much money or you're only interested in certain ones. And then if you buy all of them, I think there's a discount. Um, so again, different options coming lots of content coming. I'm definitely excited about this. I love what's being added for the Empire and the Dwarves. I personally just don't get excited about Nurgle, so don't take it as a downside for me because I'm not excited about Nurgle. You may be, but that's just me. Uh, it's not something to like knock on CA. I'm just not sure if there's a way they could make me interested in Nurgle, um, but we will get a try nonetheless. Anyway, that's the news, folks. Get down in the chat. Tell me what you think. Do you like how this is shaping up? Do you feel like things are going the way you would want to see? What do you think about the new pricing mechanics and the way they do it? I just would love to hear your feedback. There's not a right or wrong answer to that. And you'll notice that I'm not really throwing a whole bunch of my opinion in here because I don't necessarily want my opinion to shape yours. I would just like to hear what you all think. And then maybe I can share more about what I think soon enough. Anyway, Air of Carthage signing out for now, and I'll see you all soon. Oh, by the way, I am allowed to let you all know that I will be able to show you early content for Thrones of Decay. I just need to pull the schedule up. All right, so starting on the uh, 16th of April, I'll be able to show you all some free LC content, and then uh, the DLC content I'll be able to start showing as of the 23rd of April, um, and then the review embargo lifts on the 29th. I don't really do reviews, but at that point I might be willing to give you all some thoughts and impressions if you want that type of thing. Uh, but anyway, again, check it out. Hopefully you'll all be here to see that coverage. Air of Carthage signing out, and I'll see you soon with more.